Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to take a look at this project. So, um, I had just uh, watched Chuck Hellebuck's uh, channel a little bit ago, and he did up one of these that mounted to the wall. Now, one of the things I've been going to do for a while is I wanted to do up one of these like what he did. However, I wanted it to mount to a desk and, and be able to have it mount to the side of my workbench or a shelf or something like that. So I want to do a modified version of this. And one of the things in this video, I wanted to show or share with you guys how you can take an existing model like this and quickly using Tinkercad, uh, change it up to sort of meet your needs. Because this is one of the cool things I think about 3D printing is again, you can take some existing models, modify them very quickly and come up with a solution to your problem. Now, one of the things in doing this, the reason I've procrastin been procrastinating is coming up with these co uh, combs, etc. You know, but Chuck showed us how uh, he, you know, he found this Thingiverse customizer and was able to come up with this. Now, I did, I did do some other changes to this besides adding these clamping pieces here. I also shortened this up a little bit. Chuck did it on the Creality CR10. Now, I have one of those, but I didn't want it that big. So what I did is I also modified it down so it prints on a standard 200 by 200, uh, or you know, 8 inch by 8 inch 3D printer. So tell you what. Let's hop into the computer. Let's take a look at us modifying this in Tinkercad. We'll watch a little bit of a time lapse of this being printed out. Um, and then we'll come back to the bench and talk about it. So let's head over to the computer. Okay, so we're in the computer now. And I've loaded uh, the model from Chuck's video into Tinkercad. And so we have it here. Now, one of the pieces that uh, you'll notice, let me move this ruler over here a little bit is uh, this is 212 millimeters so now Chuck set this up uh, I believe to print on the CR10 which has a 300 by 300 bed I want to go a little bit smaller with this because I'm going to do something obviously a little bit different so one of the things I'm going to knock this down to 190 and, and the one thing nice about this is this scales and this still leaves me a pretty good opening on the um, uh, you know little fingers here if you will so the next thing we need to do is we need to create some clips so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring a box in here and one of the things I want to go back here and I want to make the box the same height as this so one of the things that you'll notice is what is the height so the height height is 32 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my box and I'm going to make the height 32 so it matches that and then one of the pieces here is I'm going to make this roughly I'm gonna make it uh, probably about 30 30 millimeters because I want a good inch uh, and I'm just kind of thinking out loud I, I want a good inch of overhang onto the bench if you will and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this uh, well first I'm going to start out with making it about 26 so this is going to be just a little bit proud of an inch and uh, I think that's probably going to be enough because what I'm thinking about doing is three of these clips uh, one on each end here and here then one in the center and that'll give me about three inches of overlap for the cable um, and maybe I'll do the uh, the center is two inches but I'm going to start here for right now and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to need to bring in a hole and so I'm going to bring in this hole and now the um, uh, my actual table I've took calibers and measured my table so it's uh, it's about 20.1 so I'm actually going to go about 20.2 because it usually the plastic usually contracts a little bit and then what I'm going to also do here is, uh, let me go back here, so I had 30, so I'm going to do about an inch of overhang here, so I'm going to go 26 here, uh, 26 deep, and then width I'm going to kind of kick this up to be about 50, because I really want to cut through this cube. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this in, and... Uh, I'm going to actually say, because I've got this 26, I'm going to make this 28, because I want to leave a little bit proud on the outside. And so that looks pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is use my favorite tool here and come up to use the align. And I'm going to center this, and I think this is a vertical center. I want to take a look at this now that I've got everything uh, set up on this uh, to notch this out. So I should have some good meat. Uh, right here as you can see um, with this to you know definitely be able to effectively clamp onto the table 
So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to I'm going to commit to this join. And so we now have a clip. So this this should slide over my table and and hold on uh, to the workbench area. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a copy of this. You know the old Control C, Control V. And I'm going to move this one over. And I'm now going to bring this guy to the very end. Now this is going to square off the end, which I actually wanted to do. So it's going to come in and square this end off. Now what I'm going to do is again go back here, hit this, hit my favorite tool, and uh, bring it, bring it to the end. I'm already good at the top, as we see over here. So this is what it'll look like, folks. So now what I'm going to do is. Uh, highlight this and then let's group this. Normally I'd put them and put put a couple of them together at once. And I just kind of want to see how this comes together. Um, and I'm going to take it back apart because you see this needs to come forward a little bit here. So you see this gap. Uh, one of the things I want to do is I want to change this. To, I've noticed the contrast is better in orange. So I like the orange. So I'm going to undo this. So I'm going to undo this shape. And then what I'm going to do is I want to make sure my settings over here are 0.1 millimeter. And then I'm just going to kind of keep walking it forward. And that looks pretty good. Um, so let's go ahead and try this again and join it up. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. We still have a little bit of... Um, uh, this these these artifacts here, but I think that'll be okay. Well, I tell you what, let's just do it one more time for grins and giggles. But that looks pretty close. Um, I need to move this around because I want to use it. So I just double checking my settings. So each movement that might be a little bit better. And. Uh, I think that should be good. So I think that's actually even better. So let's go ahead and try this once again. And sometimes you have to do this a couple times. So I think this is about the best I'm going to get. I think this is this isn't too bad. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this guy in. But before I do that, I'm also going to create another copy of him for the center. And I just want to take a look here. So I'm going to move this guy in. And I want to take a look at him. Just kind of walk him into the center. So I think that's about there. And uh, one of the things, sometimes I get going a little crazy with the mouse there. Sorry about that. So I want to, I want to do this. I don't want the other guy in the mix just yet. So let's do this. Let's just double check. So I get this right to the edge. There it goes. I should be good. So let's go ahead again and let's group this together. And that guy's hooked up there. So again, let's turn it back to orange. I don't like the red. And uh, I think we're, we're pretty good. I got to bring this guy forward a little bit. Um, and I can tell how far I should bring it in. I could use the ruler tool and measure, but I, I, I can eyeball this pretty close because once I pass through about like that, I know I'm, I'm pretty much in line with the other ones. Um, so now what I need to do is again, do this and do the align. And looks like I'm already centered, so that's good. So I don't have to worry about that. Um, the only piece is because I am going to have to print this with supports to print this out. Uh, so I, I will have to have supports in here. And this is one of the reasons I don't make one big long bracket because then I'm just going to have, you know, a ton of supports going through there. Um, and I'm just trying to look at this to see if there's anything else. And I don't think there is. And so I'm going to go ahead and just group these all together and do a final group. And let's go back to our orange, and we have it here. So now what will happen is these fingers will hold it onto the desk. Um, there shouldn't be a ton of weight uh, on the desk. Uh, and I'm just trying to think here. I think there's enough material in the bottom, and there's enough of this uh, fillet here 
in the bottom to hold hold the weight because this, again this is just going to be USB cables and test cables and sort of like what Chuck had. So anyways, um, I tell you what, I'm going to send this off to the printer now and then we'll take a look at it when it's done. So let's hop over to the printer and take a look at a time lapse. Okay, so we took a uh, look at all that and we're back. Now, one of the things in the computer, this was my first model that I did. And notice uh, something interesting about it is this end tooth. For some reason, now I set this at 190 and I went ahead and I printed this on the Wanhao. But this came out all kind of really wonkers with this end piece. Now, there is an end fill. I don't know why it... it came up with that. You can see it's not that way in the model so what I did is I just went back in and I shrunk it up another 10, 10 millimeters to 180 from 190 then printed this guy out and you can kind of see and this guy came out great. Um, so I don't know why I did this but it kind of an interesting anomaly sort of you do do a few experiments and uh, hey you come up with different things but uh, it turned out pretty good. Uh, I had supports in here, which I've cleaned out pretty much. I got to do a little bit more cleaning, and uh, you know, I'll put a picture up here of it mounted on the bench, and you guys can see how it turned out. Really happy with this. Um, the one thing that I, I probably would have done in hindsight a little bit more if, is I would have shrunk this back a little bit because I don't really need it uh, sort of like how, how Chuck had his with all the banana clips or, or different clips coming in here. Uh, I sort of want this just to, to loop around different cables so I could have gone uh, with a little bit shorter. And I probably will make up other versions of this because one of the things I have a bunch of uh, Melmine shelving in my office and in my workshop and everything and what I want, want to do is have a model like this that simply slides on then I can you know put all this stuff here and if I want to move things around because one of the things I am big on is rearranging is it's not permanently mounted so <clears throat> I just slide this off slide it on another location and boom I'm good to go because this is standardized size so again just wanted to share with you guys how this works and basically how you can take an existing 3d model and modify it to your needs rather quickly and again this is you know one of the great things about 3d printing so thanks Uncle Chuck for um, spurring me along on this project. I've been wanting to do this forever and a day to kind of clean up the rat's nest the cables I've had laying around. So hey, um, subscribe button coming up over there. Swag Shop's up there. Actually, I got that in the wrong order, but hey, that's okay. Hit me up in the comments below if there's something else you'd like to see me do or something else you'd like to modify or that I might find handy for the workshop. So cheers. See you in the next video. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.